It's refreshing to see you and to love you. And it's a joy to open the Word of the Lord together and to learn from His precepts the good things of our God. In the world that we live in today, people are spending much of their time learning, and some of that learning uh, is almost a waste of time. But we are learning that which relates to eternity, that which relates to the well-being of the composite, uh, creative uh, thing that you are, spirit, soul, and body, created so by the mighty hand of the living God. And for us to study together these beautiful truths and understand them together, it's a joy. Today's lesson is very significant. It is uh, in your syllabus there is marked Lesson 10. In our television application, it's, it's another number. If you have a syllabus, it's page 56. And this is the unusual one of the whole group of lessons, I presume, divine healing by exorcism. That means uh, divine healing by casting out of a spirit, out of a person, that they don't have a, an itch <laughs> and they don't have a, exactly a pain. They have a, a something inside of them of a living entity. Now, in John chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, The thief cometh, that's the devil, the thief cometh but for to steal, kill, destroy. I am come that you may, might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. The thief, which is the devil, he comes to steal anything that's good from you, your health, your home, your business. He is a he is, a, he is a thief. He comes to kill that which is living, that which is blessed, even though it's a living experience, to kill anything. He is a killer, to kill anything that's living, to let her die, and also to destroy. If you have something built up, he wants to tear it down. Like by the seaside, when you build a little, a little castle of sand, he wants to kick it down. He, from the beginning, has been known as a destroyer. Jesus said, I am different from this thief. I am come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. When you have abundant life, you have it in your spirit, your soul, and your body. Totality. That, that's what abundant life is. It's when you're full of it. Every part of your being is full of it. There is an infallible truth in the world that we live in today. I encounter it. I've been in over 100 nations. I encounter it everywhere I go that there are evil spirits or demons who can bring a seemingly uh, illness and disease upon the human being. Uh, sometimes in the body, very often times in the solical parts of the mind and the emotions. All medical doctors discover baffling cases which they say cannot be explained uh, me uh, medically. And that oftentimes is where the power of God must come in and do the thing that has to be done. Now, in the Bible, uh, in the book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 7, the Bible says that Satan went forth from the presence of Jehovah and smote, and smote Job with boils, sore boils, from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. <laughs> I mean, you students would have liked that. Now, he did not get sick by, by poisoning. Now, he did not get sick because he wasn't eating the right stuff. Uh, he did not get sick, you know, because of anything he had done. The Bible says here that Satan brought that thing upon him. The devil brought that thing upon him. Big cancerous running sores from the sole of his foot to the top of his head. Whew. You ought to read the book of Job. It's, it's a most interesting thing. And so we discover that it is possible. That's our first fact that the devil can bring an illness to the human being because it's related so in the Old Testament. Let us go to the New Testament. Uh, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4 and verse 24, it says of Jesus Christ, his fame w went throughout all Syria. Uh, that whole area in that time was uh, uh, under the Syrians. It was uh, called Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people, and that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, diseases and torments, and those who were possessed with devils, 
Now, you know the Bible's a truthful book, an honest book, so we must accept it. And those which were lunatic, and those that had palsy, and he healed them. Now, in a lot of churches today, uh, if you have a fever, uh, they, they will pray for you. Uh, but if you are possessed with the devil, uh, they put you in asylum. They, they, won't, they don't want to tackle that. But the Lord Jesus here said there were people of diverse diseases. And besides those that had diverse diseases, there were those who had torments. They were just tormented. That means in their mind, their emotions, you see. And that there were those that had evil spirits residing within them. They were possessed. And, and also those who were lunatic had palsy. And it says, Jesus healed them. It didn't matter whether it was in the body or in the soul or in the spirit. He healed them. In Matthew chapter 17 and verse 15, it says, Lord, have mercy on my son. He is lunatic. He is sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and often to the water. I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. That's a pitiful case sometimes. Jesus answered and said, you faithless and perverse generation, talking to his disciples, mind you. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. Now, devil, he did not the sickness. And that spirit departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. And so when we're dealing with such a subject as divine healing through exorcism, we do it on the basis of the Old Testament and the New Testament led by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is our guide. He is our leader. And he's the one that to tells us what we can do or cannot do. In the Gospel of Luke, uh, in chapter 9, uh, beginning in verse uh, 37, the Bible says, It came to pass that when they were come down from the hill, Jesus and his three disciples, much people were with him. And a man of the company cried, saying, Master, I beseech you to look upon my son. He is my only child. And that's always a problem, you know, an only child. A spirit taketh him. Now see, the man, though he might have been ignorant, knew that this thing wasn't normal or natural. He said, a spirit taketh him. And suddenly he crieth out. He teareth him. He foameth at the mouth, bruising him, hardly departing from him. That a terrible mess to have in your home. I've seen it my own self, not dozens of times, hundreds of times. When I'm on the road speaking, it's almost every day, almost every day. You can't imagine. And they're not just children. One of the most pitiful examples of it was a medical doctor that I just prayed for. A man must be 50 years old. This terrible spirit had killed his mother. It was tormenting him, and I had reached his son, and he asked for deliverance, and we prayed the prayer of deliverance over him. The spirit taketh him, and suddenly, when it grabs him, you know, when you're possessed, the thing comes and it goes. So I besought your disciples, and they couldn't help me. Jesus answered, O oh, perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? And as he was a coming, the devil tore him, and he, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Jesus identified this thing as being a dirty, dirty spirit. An unclean spirit, he healed the child and delivered him unto his father. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. All amazed at the mighty power of God. Uh, the Lord Jesus cleansed people, body, soul, and spirit. The church of Jesus Christ must do the same uh, today. We read further regarding the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1, that when that, that when Jesus had called him, his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And verse 8 says, that was verse 1, verse 8 says that they might heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. And Jesus said, freely you have received, freely uh, give. To me, that was one of the most uh, uh, touching, touching things. That not only did Jesus set people free that were possessed, it says here that his disciples had power over unclean spirits to cast them out, not just to talk to them, 
relieve that person of them. And not only could they do that, but they could heal regular diseases, natural diseases. But the beautiful thing is, he said, freely you have received, freely give. There are people who really have power to pray for the sick that don't do much of it. They, they, they tired, they, <laughs> they're resting, they're on vacation. When a person has a gift, they ought to use it. And a church that knows the truth ought to put it on signboards and let people come and get it. I mean, if you got it, you got it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Uh, you recognize what you have, and, but use it. Jesus said, freely you have received. Freely give. Don't give skimpy. Uh, if you've got it freely, give it freely. If you've got a lot, give a lot. The Lord, the Lord loves that. God is great, grand, thrilled and pleased uh, when people uh, uh, do that. And they're, 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 God is so glad for it. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 8, uh, we read in verse 26, And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee, right straight across to the other side. And when Jesus went forth to land, they met him out of the city a certain man. This man, is said, had devils of a long time in him. This man wore no clothes. He did not abide in a house, but he lived in a cemetery among the tombs. The devil likes cemeteries. When this man saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him with a loud voice. Uh, it wasn't the man at all, you see. It, it was the demons within him. He said, what have I do with you, Jesus? You're the Son of God Most High. I beseech thee, torment me not. And so these spirits immediately realized they had met their master. They had met one that could deliver, one that could exercise them and send them forth out of this man. Because in verse 29 it says, Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it caught him and kept bound with chains and fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Did you know there are people in our land today that are being driven all over the place by the power of the devil? <laughs> That's right. I meet them. And, and, and sometimes uh, people that don't love humanity and don't get to see many of these things, they're not looking for them. If they did look for them, they'd run from them and they would not communicate with them. Uh, but here was a man that was driven of the devil into the wilderness and, and, and Jesus found him. Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion because many devils were entered into him. A Roman legion was at least 2,000 warriors, and it went up as high as 5,000 warriors. And so uh, here was a man between two and 5,000 evil, evil things living inside of him. And they besought that he would not command them to go into the deep. Evidently, Jesus had authority to send them into the bottom of the waters there. And they were a herd of swine feeding in the mountain close by. And they said, let us go into the swine. And, and Jesus suffered them, and the spirits went out of the man, into the swine. They ran into the, uh, into the, into the Sea of Galilee, and there they were destroyed, the, not, the, not the spirits. We, we have no idea as to where the spirits went, unless the, from that time they were bound in those waters. But anyway, the man returned uh, with a great news uh, of what God had done for him, and many people, many people were changed because of the story. Of this man. Jesus set him free in his spirit by exercising an evil thing that was within him. In Luke's gospel chapter 13 verse 11 it says there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. She had not a regular illness but a spirit of infirmity. It moved all around through her whole being. It says she was bowed over and could in no wise lift herself up. And Jesus saw her. He called her to him and said woman Thou art loose from thine infirmity. He laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and she glorified God and the rule of the synagogue with indignation, because it was the Sabbath day when Jesus healed the woman. It says, There are six days which men ought to work, and, and therefore, why would you heal on the Sabbath day? Isn't that amazing that a religious man, <laughs> head of a religion, 
I would get angry because somebody got healed, even because it was on Sunday. He says, you shouldn't heal on Sunday, you should heal on Thursday. Isn't that amazing? It's re religious people are a conundrum. You won't ever understand them, don't ever try it. They, they're completely unreasonable. When it don't go their way, uh, then, then they get all upset because it's not going their way. Everything else is wrong because uh, it doesn't go the way that they want it to go. But Jesus said, lo, this woman that's been bound 18 years, she should be loosed on the Sabbath day. And he did it. Uh, we read also in Mark's gospel, chapter 5, it says, uh, they came from the other side of the sea uh, to the country of the Gadarenes, and they came uh, uh, out of the ship, and a man met him coming out of the tombs. And this man was a wild man. Uh, it says in verse 4, he could break his fetters, his chains, uh, were plucked asunder, they'd fall to pieces. Uh, he was a wild person. And that made no difference with Jesus. Jesus healed him completely and effectively. Now, we live in a world today uh, where people need healing, and they need it by exorcism. Uh, schizophrenia, for example, is uh, medically defined as a mental disorder characterized by the splitting of the personality, uh, a disassociation, and an emotional deterioration. About 30 million Americans suffer from what we call schizophrenia or some other psychiatric problems. And 1,500,000 Americans require hospitalization due to their mental torments. Uh, since our public health system does not recognize the true problem uh, with these patients, it has, been successful in the, it has not been successful in the treating of these disorders. Medical science attempts include electroshock therapy, and it hurt many people. Insulin uh, uh, therapy, uh, drug therapy, uh, such as antipsychotic uh, medicines, antidepressants, and, and so forth, and even the megavitamin uh, treatments, trying to set people free from a thing that is a spirit and not just a regular sickness. The only true cure of schizophrenia and other sorts of mental illness is to cast the thing that's in there out uh, which is expressing itself through that individual and to set them free. The Bible gives us examples of how people are set free. In fact, I have already uh, given you several examples, and you can read Mark chapter 5, verses 2 to 5, and 8 and 15, and, and see there how the Lord Jesus Christ does set people free. They are set free by His mighty power, and He can set anyone free, everyone free, we have seen whole nations changed by God's power through one such type of healing. Uh, the, the, the Philippines was such a place. We had two very remarkable uh, instances of healing in this way. Uh, there was a boy that would uh, very strangely disappear. He could be seated in the floor with his brothers and sisters, and, and suddenly uh, he would be gone. He would just evaporate. Not a door would move, uh, not a window would move, but, uh, but Cornelio was gone. And the father would nail down the windows with nails, nail the door closed with nails. It didn't bother. He, 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 he was gone. It might be two days before he would come back. Now, we had the story verified. This child went to school and disappeared in class. The teacher had a nervous breakdown and never did recover. I mean, I talked to her personally. She never taught school again. She was so destroyed by this boy evaporating in class and coming back just the same. They would be in the middle of a study and he would arrive without a door moving or anything into his seat and the whole class would become startled and trembling all over. This child was brought to my meeting. I was preaching in the Knox Memorial Methodist Church in Manila and a Methodist pastor brought this uh, young man to my meeting, and we cast it out of him. He definitely disappeared again, although he had disappeared many, many times. Nobody knows how many times he had disappeared before. And he was completely healed by a prayer of exorcism. Now, you could have prayed for him like praying for uh, pain or praying for something like that. You never would have touched him. When we understood it was a spirit, we dealt specifically with a spirit. And we commanded the spirit to come out of him. We put a circle of blood around him and said, this is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, spiritually we did this. And that the devil could not cross it. 
and, and that he could never again be hurt by this spirit. And he was healed. We made a film of it. We do have a film of it. And we even have it on one half inch for your home if you would like to see the story. And we had it documented uh, uh, by, by, by officers of the law and by his classmates, by his family, in every way that you could have a thing documented. This was documented to tell you that there was a boy set free in this way. The one the world knows most about is a girl in the Philippines called, called Clarita. She was in jail for being a harlot and uh, had been a harlot since she was 12 years old. She was now 17, going into her 18th year. And while in prison, in Billy Bid Prison, this thing would, would bite her. And one day it bit her up underneath the hand of the doctor that had a hold of her. When he raises his hand, there's the tooth marks and the saliva, and it bit between the two hands. And that doctor said, I'm leaving. He got out of that place and he said, I, I can't deal with this kind of thing and I, I don't want to be around it. And so he ran. And we were called into Bilibid prison and prayed for this girl and God healed her. And it brought such glory to the Lord that a great revival came because of it. The mayor of the city that had seen the girl personally when she was being bitten and saw the deep teeth marks into her skin, even on her back, on her shoulders, the back of her neck, where her head could not have gotten uh, it all to bite herself, and the medical doctors certainly wouldn't, wouldn't do it, and they weren't, they weren't playing games, they were desperate. One of the doctors had laughed at her, and she cursed him and said, you will die, and he died the next day. And so they weren't playing games, uh, they, they were trying to save their own lives, and the life of a, a young girl that was completely normal, except when this thing would come upon her. And, and, and get within her, and then she couldn't do anything uh, but uh, receive these bites, faint, and would not come to again for three or four hours. And after we prayed for her, and she was set free from this, and a couple of years later, uh, we saw her and her husband. She had married by this time, and then just before leaving the country, she came to see us again. She had two beautiful little children, and I asked her husband, have you ever seen anything abnormal about this girl? And he said, no, I haven't. I've seen nothing abnormal about her. So she stayed normal by the power of God. Now this, this is an, a healing through exorcism, through the casting forth of a living entity that is within that person. Now, in our ministry, we have these almost every day. Uh, in our South Bend, Indiana uh, auditorium, Almost every time we open the doors, they come from the state of Oregon, the state of Washington, they come from Texas, they come from California, they come from New York, they come from Florida, from Texas, and they come, and almost all of them come because of this problem. They're tormented by a thing that's outside of their bodies, a thing that's not normal and natural to them, and a thing that is so frightening until they don't know how to handle it and they don't know what to do with it, and they very pitifully say, where we come from, no one seems to be able to help us. Now, the only reason that a minister would not be able to help them would be through unbelief. Anytime you say you can't do it, you're telling the truth. But Jesus never said that. The apostles never said that. Paul cast forth spirits out of people, and whole cities were moved by the power of God because of it. Peter cast forth entities out of people and whole areas were moved and charged by the power of God when they were set free. All through history, there have been men of God like Martin Luther, Charles and John Wesley and people of this caliber that laid hands upon people and cast things out from them that were not human and, and they, were, they, were, they were evil that was in that person, cast it forth and they were healed by God's mighty power. In these last days in which we live today, there are multiplied millions of people who need to be set free. Therefore, we need you. Every one of you students, we need you to set others free. We need you to study the word on this subject and say, Lord, not only would I pray for those that have a fever, <laughs> or those that have a sickness, I pray for those that are tormented by evil spirits. And if you'll do that, God will help you to set many people free. It isn't that it is a big thing to do. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. In the Great Commission, in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, it specifically says, they that have faith shall cast out devils. This was the last words that Jesus said before he went back to heaven. 
that was his ultimate saying, and when if he says it, he means it. And so you have the authority to go forth and to set others free. We do it in humility, we do it in love, we do it in tenderness, we do it because we care, and we do it because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the Word of God assures us, and we accept the Word of God, and we believe it. Therefore, may many be set free because of you and because of what they're seeing right now, because they can be set free by accepting it. I believe you, Lord Jesus, at this moment to set free those who are hurt. I believe you of this moment to send forth your great love and your great power and your great anointing. I believe you, Lord, to set them free by your mighty power. Now, Lord, let this thing be. I believe you for it, and I do thank you for it, and I do uh, praise you for it. Now, Lord, let it be, we pray in Jesus' name. Let every member of the class set somebody else free by your mighty power. Now, Lord, we thank you that you will hear their prayers and you move through enlightenment. When we know and we are sure, then that's when you can bless. So make them a blessing in Jesus' name. And whoever you are, Christ can set you free. There are no difficult cases. When the man had more than 2,000 demons in him, Jesus never said, oh, that's just too many. <laughs> Jesus set him free. And Jesus right now can set you free.